today's Jinky Transit video. So this is for the new moon in Scorpio this week. It'll be actually, it'll be for tomorrow. Usually I do same day, but I have a summit tomorrow. So I needed to do it early. <laughs> I hope that you come visit us. It's going to be uh, pretty awesome. So I should, you should, you'll probably hear from it on the YouTube channel. But if you want like the free gifts and the offers that are part of the summit, then you want to register and that link is found in the description box. So this week, new moon and Scorpio, we've got the gate 43 of insight. And this is also the same thing and gene keys with as the gift. So it is the shadow of death deafness, um, the gift of insight, and the city of epiphany. And as you know, we like to go through a little bit what that means. I love diving deep on the gene keys. But we also have get some insights from Karen Cray Parker, who is the founder of Quantum Human Design. So she has her own descriptions as well. And in those, we get the reminder that our insight is from the inner knowing, those inner whisperings and what we want to do with this in this energy what is well what is helping us to do is to listen to listen deeply to ourselves and that when we do we can also hear and respond to others so when we're tapping into this energy we're tapping into the ability to share new knowledge um, but also just to have it, right? To recognize our own uh, intuition, insight uh, as a gift. So when we're having trouble, like today, because <laughs> I'm so focused on my summit, focusing <laughs> and articulating what you want others to understand, sometimes it can be about this. You have a deep insight, but it's not clarified or for the outer knowing yet. Right. And so that can often be just a timing issue. Is it ready? Are you still supposed to be nourishing and restoring yourself with that information before you share it? Do you have a sense of timing? Are you responding or trusting your intuition on when is the right time? One of these is also when the right time uh, is, is also dependent upon who's listening as well. So if you are trying to give new information to somebody who's not yet ready to receive it, not aligned to it, um, then it can look like um, causing confusion or somebody feeling like they're like, oh, why are you talking to me? Like, are you trying to point me out? They can be offended. So knowing when it's the right time to speak and who you're speaking to is a very important thing to know and uh, trust from yourself that because that's an inner knowing, knowing in and of yourself. <laughs> um, one of the things that um, that can also help you is by understanding that that inner knowing um, is really something that is for you, right? And then you decide when it is for others. That's just something that I always try to remind people of because not everything is for everybody. But we also want to have an open heart, be sympathetic for those who aren't ready. Because sometimes we're sending a message publicly and people are responding that aren't ready, but you can't not say it because you're talking to the people that are, right? So this is where it can start to um, shine a light on why uh, Richard Rudd talks about the rebel in this key. So uh, other things that you can understand is that as the shadow frequency and that shadow frequency is usually coming out of the fear, the fear of um, not being respected, valued, uh, heard. So it can make you worry or it can make you noisy. Yeah? And so this kind of noisiness sometimes shows up as needing to be right, right? Um, and so you also have that. And how do we, how do we tap into our insight, into our inner knowing? Well, 
you gotta, you gotta make time for it. You gotta make space for it. So Karen Curry Parkers talks about being by yourself and alone so that you can hear your own insights and, and with inner wisdom. And Richard Rose talks about just being relaxed into yourself deeply. So you can deeply relax with your own nature. Your nature is the essence of who you be. So you don't have to be anything different, right? It's exactly who you are right now. So it's not about being somebody different, it's about being uh, accepting of who you are, right? So you wanna do that some of the beautiful things. How do we know that we're shifting from fear to the gift? Well, number one, the fear feels like there's no never ending need for something. You think that you need to improve yourself. Self-improvement is great. But if you think that it's going to change the fact that we aren't, we're not yet comfortable, we don't know everything yet, um, it's going to have us all the answers we'll ever need for the rest of our lives. As anytime we think that's the result we're getting out of that time, <laughs> we get sorely disappointed because we always brought back to the reality that we can't know everything. Everything is continuously growing and evolving. So there's always going to be a new frontier of understanding, wisdom, number one. And then number two, that this part, part of life and living is uncertainty. Uh, you know, how long are we going to be here? How long do, or when is the wonderful connection going to happen with our top client, our best partner in our business, right? Those things we cannot always predict. We can, we can encourage, but we can't always predict, right? So a, a lot of the breakthroughs happen into insight or so when we have that clarity that it's not out of anything coming, but something that's already here. Um, and so that's that breakthrough of insight. And he calls it like a breakthrough from the void, or maybe that's what I call it. <laughs> but this kind of like in that fear place, it can feel really scary and dark and all the things of the unknown, right? And so when we are having that breakthrough, it's like you come out of the void. So that's one of the things that I want us to, to walk away with this time, that uh, insight can come from deep relaxedness and being by yourself. Uh, and that parts of what we want to learn, uh, experience maybe in the next couple of weeks, uh, separate yourself from the noise. Um, so shadow, right? The shadow is a fear of not being heard. So a lot of people respond by over speaking, not over. And there's nothing, you know, not that they're wrong in speaking too much, but but that it is part of what sounds noisy and why people get tuned out. The noisiness is of the, the fear that makes everybody constantly talk, right? And we're starting to see that a lot in social media. And I think that's why a lot of sensitives don't want to be part of the noise, right? So how do we break out of the noise? We'll talk a little bit about that and the content piece. Um, but yeah, that's part of it. If you talk without connection to your inner wisdom and insight, it can sound noisy, okay? The other part is the break through the void, that that nothing again is certain and that we're... we're of willing to face the discomfort of uncertainty uh, allows us to break through with insight, with new insight and understanding and a new sense of certainty, because at least you know you, you're you connected to yourself and that is pretty much the only certainty you're gonna get, <laughs> uh, true, true certainty. Um, the getting into flow. So I think it's important to know what is your, your kind of point in which you are in response? It's to me, that's that timing piece. When is it the right time to speak up, the right time to respond? Uh, who are we speaking to? So that we're not so offended when the person that we weren't speaking to overhears us and be like, and gets angry, right? Um, it's part of what happens in this energy because in the gift, it's it often feels like rebellion because it's just out of this darkness is light. It's this immense power of creativity. And it's what makes us stand out is the pure knowing that can only come from within us. And we are that rarity, that diamond that nobody else 
can even be close to imitating, right? So that can look like rebelling against everybody else, which is another reason why we tend not to speak up, right? <laughs> but that's part of it. And when people can see you do it, they can be inspired to do it for themselves. So in that, I'm going to go ahead and jump to the programming partner it is 23, uh, which is Taurus and that opposition, right? So that is the shadow of complexity, the gift of simplicity, and the city of quintessence. So what I love about quintessence is that that word is so deep. It's really just the essence of something. It's when you can bring something down to it's this total singular essence, yeah? Which is how we can keep things simple. So in the shadow, what I was trying to say is that we get complex and we're trying to, trying to force understanding, trying to make people hear us. And the simplicity is like, keep it simple. Like they, it came to you in an instance, like how clear was that instant and how can you speak to that? I think that's a great, it's just a great hand in hand energy. The channel, the completion of the channel, the human design chart, it's the same key. Usually I talk about how, what the difference is there, but it's the same key. And it's this and other side of the Ajna channel, to, which is the throat um, center. Okay. So that is really saying that we're trying to take our understanding and speak it into existence or bring it into the world. Right. So what that is really that, um, that desire, that impetus when they're ready to do it and are ready to do it. So it's that's the other side of it. You need a sense of when you're ready to do it and, and that essence and so that it doesn't get too complicated for the new people coming into this understanding. And that's where I think is a great place to start for your content this week. So your content, what I think is a good place to start or be at is what Again, what do you know about what your transformation is, how you're gonna help the people that you are here to help? What do you know about when that insight comes in? When is the time usually? So a lot of people have this understanding, oh, well, whenever my client's in transition, if they're leaving a job or if they're having a big um, shakeup in their life, an illness or something, there's a, some kind of turning point that makes them look deeper and have the insight that something needs to change. And then that's usually when they can recognize that there's a support system um, that will allow them and get, walk them through something that other people have experienced. That's when, that's where you come in, right? Um, and so that's one way to talk about uh, your content is to talk about what, what are they experiencing before? What are they experiencing before? We have to be willing to talk about um, what it looks like not to know for people to be able to recognize themselves in our content, okay? Um, so, and then the next, one I think is a good idea is how are you a rebel? Show your, you know, share your rebel, wave your freak flag is how <laughs> Ryan Eliasson says it. Well, you know, what's your rebel? Like how, how are you rebelling against the majority? Um, that's a good way to stand out from the crowd, stand out from the noise. It's really to speak directly to what, um, what makes you different what makes you different and that it is like, you know, you know, people choose a lot of times, you know, their success factors, which is also good. I'm not saying <laughs> like money, how much money you made, how many clients you got, um, those kind of things. And that's great. But, um, you know, pretty much any successful business has those things at some level, right? So what makes you stand out is actually that inner part that makes you feel like maybe you're the weird one when you're younger that's exactly the same part that people want to know about you so they know because what the truth is is that you're not the only one and so they'll recognize themselves and they'll be like oh well nobody else talks about that but they're talking about what it's like to be that person I'm that person I just haven't told anybody yet 
right? So you want to be in that framework where people can see you. That's, a, that's what they call it, that RAS, right? The RAS system, RA system or whatever. Um, <laughs> that's how people, that's like, how things stand out is that they recognize themselves or what they have had an experience with, okay? And then the other parts, the kind of a double-edged sword here, but how are you cutting a new pathway? Cutting a new pathway. So that's good, a good way to talk about your content. How are you cutting a new path in this transformational experience, right? Why does it look different? What, what's different about it? That's what you want to know, like, right? So those are the things that I want you to walk away with again. I am really helping people discover that even though they're sensitive, they, they can find a new way to be visible. So that's how I'm cutting the path is that it doesn't have to look like everybody else, but we want to start to get to know what it looks like for us to get visible and feel authentic doing it. My rebels, my rebels, they are here to change the world. They are here to change the world. They have such a way of bringing in different information that they can uh, just make the bridge from the old systems to the new systems, from the old ways of being as people to the new ways of being. So that's my, my inner rebel is about taking the things that look like they're just obvious and that everybody's doing it just for one reason and then make them into these wonderful tools that can shift the world, right? So that's how I use voice. That's why, how I use astrology and I love combining intuition and science. That's my jam. So what's yours? What's yours? And if you want to learn more about the Voice in Your Vision Summit, which is for highly sensitive leaders who are ready to upgrade their visibility and make a true impact to serve everyone better. That's what we're doing at the Voice in Your Vision Summit. You can find the link in the description box and I will see you guys on the next move. Thank you so much for coming by. I appreciate you being here. And if I don't see you in, in chat on YouTube, then I'd love to see you at one of my events. Check my links in the comments.